Lincoln characterized Stephen Douglas's argument as a specious and fantastic arrangement of words, by which a man can prove a horse chestnut to be a chestnut horse. If there is anything a man can do well, I say let him do it. Give him a chance. We all declare for liberty, but in using the same word we do not all mean the same thing. I claim not to have controlled events, but confess plainly that events have controlled me. Towering genius, thirsts and burns for distinction, and, if possible, it will have it, whether at the expense of emancipating slaves or enslaving freemen. We cannot escape history. You cannot build character and courage by taking away people's initiative and independence. You cannot help people permanently by doing for them what they could and should do for themselves. Let every man remember that to violate the law is to trample on the blood of his father, and to tear the charter of his own and his children's liberty. Upon the subject of education, I can only say that I view it as the most important subject which we as a people may be engaged in. Abraham Lincoln September 22, 1860 to Mrs. M. J. Green, your kind congratulatory letter of August was received in due course and should have been answered sooner. The truth is I have never corresponded much with ladies, and hence I postpone writing letters to them, as a business which I do not understand. I can only say now I thank you for the good opinion you express of me, fearing, at the same time, I may not be able to maintain it through life. Four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember, what we say here but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Now I can ride. I have a pumpkin at each end of my sack. No man was to be eulogized for what he did, or censured for what he did or did not do. All of us are the children of conditions, of circumstances, of environment, of education, of acquired habits, and of heredity, molding men as they are and will forever be. We can complain because rose bushes have thorns or rejoice because thorn bushes have roses. I would just as soon die now, but I haven't done anything yet to be remembered by. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. If the do has the can, and the ifs possess the buts, then the has can the can in the ifs but, and the delicate walnut shell that is the universe shall be sundered and the prepositional pronouns will break free from their shackles, and the winds shall rule the world. A chair that reclines is mighty fine. If we never try, we shall never succeed. Being used now, in order to force slavery onto Kansas, for it cannot be done in any other way. Sensation, the